morning, you guys. Thanks for following me. Um, if you're not a follower, not a subscriber, look right down here. There's a button that says subscribe. It's down there. It's in the corner. Click it. Um, follow me so that you can watch my seriously screwed up life um, live. Not really live. Um, I am driving home from the gym, so I'm not running around in my underpants. I promise I'm in a, a sports outfit. Um, and I was going to talk a little bit about anxiety this morning because I have been incredibly anxious. Okay, so there, I have lots of things to be anxious about right now. And um, it's something that the devil uses to control me regularly. And I know this because I don't have any reason to be anxious about a lot of these things. They're going to take care of themselves and there's nothing that I can do to control them. All I can do is give them to God in prayer and hope for the best. But here I am driving along. So let me, let me tell you a little bit about all this stuff. So my husband died in January and I'm alone for the first time in my life. And that makes me really anxious because what if something breaks or what if I need something or what if this, what if that, like there's this giant pile of what ifs just having to do with me being alone because I don't know what I'm doing half the time and I forget stuff. I'm terrible. Um, I looked out at my husband's beautiful blue truck this morning and realized I have not cranked it since I brought it home from my stepdaughter's house a few weeks ago. So I'm really hoping the battery's not dead again because I already bought one battery for it and I'm not buying another. Um, I got to put the motorcycle on for sale and I got to put that truck up for sale. And I'm anxious about those two things because my stepdaughter wants to buy the truck, but I don't think she has the money right now, but I can't just give it to her and I need the money to pay someone to do the floor work in my house. So I'm anxious about going back to her and saying, Hey, do you want this truck? I need the money. If not, I need to sell it to someone who has the money. Anxious about selling the motorcycle because I don't know anything about motorcycles other than I look really good on the back of one. I love the way it feels between my legs. I like whipping through the wind on the back of it behind Kurt. I rode behind Victor the other day. It wasn't the same. It really sucked. Um, I am anxious because my daughter is living in my house and she right now is struggling with severe depression and anxiety herself. And because of that, her life is not going well. And when she is doing well, she does really, really well. But when she is struggling with depression and anxiety, which she does from time to time, um, she does not do well. And right now she is not doing well. And it's causing me a lot of anxiety to have to live with her because I try to keep myself in a positive and in a good place. Even when all this bad stuff is happening and I cry every little while, I still try really hard to be positive with her, with my grandkids, with people, and you know, lead, be faithful to show up in my life. And she does the opposite where she goes down the tubes and is just angry, sad, ugly to everyone, you know, and it's hard for me, it gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, I'm anxious about this trip I'm going on. I'm anxious about if I'm gonna be alone forever. I'm anxious about friendship and am I doing a good job of keeping in touch with everyone? I'm anxious about my truck because I know it needs motor mount and I haven't had time to take it to Greg or Ryan and I'm anxious about what that's going to cost and I'm anxious about my daughter's vehicle because she doesn't take care of it and it needs to go for an oil change. I'm anxious they'll find something that she needs to fix and she doesn't have the money and I'm anxious that she's not going to find an apartment or a daycare so that she's going to still be living there and I'm anxious that I'm not going to get the house fixed in time. So do you hear me like rattling on anxious, 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 all this anxiety. Okay. I got all this stuff. When you listen back to all the stuff I said, in that pile of stuff, there's very little that is within my control other than making the appointments to have a few things done, like getting the oil changed in my daughter's vehicle or scheduling an appointment to get my vehicle worked on. Um, I'm anxious about the money that I'm spending on it, but I don't need to be. God's taking care of that. Um, God is taking care of me in such miraculous ways that I don't have to worry about that. I know that it's going to be taken care of. I've got this wonderful set of friends of my husband's that make sure that I don't get price gouged, that things are done at a fair price, and that they're honest with me, and things get taken care of properly. I don't have to worry about it, and I have the money to afford what I need to afford. I don't have to worry about my daughter because I am not her, and I love her, therefore I care, but it's not my job to take care of everything for her. Although that's what I try to do a lot of the time. Still working on that codependency thing, guys. I made phone calls for her this morning. Um, I cannot control her life and her depression, her anxiety. That's on her. All I can do is ask God to guide her 
every day. Every day I pray for all the kids, all four of them, to be led by God, to be drawn close to Him, and for their eyes to be opened, and for them to see that it's Him. Um, of the four children, two are definitive believers in Christ. And two, one is probably a believer, but doesn't walk the walk or bear the fruit. And one is completely a non-believer. You know, so I pray for that. I pray for my daughter to find a godly man to lead her. Boy, I, I know that it just burns her up every time I say it in front of her. But that's what she needs more than anything is someone to hold her hand and help her through it and help her find her way. And since she doesn't believe in God, I'm hoping that a godly man will show her how to get there. Because I can't because she just really gets angry with me about that. So, you know, when I'm thinking about all of this, and I recently did a Bible study just, you know, like six weeks ago about Sermon on the Mount. There's this whole section where it talks about um, not worrying about tomorrow for today has enough worries of its own. And that God takes care of the birds and the flowers. And, you know, don't you think he's going to take care of you if he's going to take care of the little bird? Aren't you more important than a bird? Okay, well, realistically, um, so our pastor brought this up during his sermon this past week where he's like, you know, the, tell you what, the bird, you know, the bird is not out there just like sitting around though, like just sitting on his duff. Okay, that's where I am. So I'm trying to give all my anxiety to God, but at the same time, I feel like I need to be doing something with what's got, with what God is giving me to move things along, except I don't know what that is. So let me go back to something that I've said before that I don't know how to voice a lot of times. I wish God could send me a text message or an email and say, hey, Rebecca, I set up this stuff for you, this stuff that you're seeing here, just assume that that's all for me, and this is what I need you to do with it, because I don't know. I'm looking at my life, right? Okay, so here I am sitting in my life, and I need to figure out my next steps, because I'm in this place of massive change. My husband is deceased, so I'm a widow. Um, my daughter has moved back in with me. Her life is not in a great place, and I'm trying to help her. I'm trying to get my house ready to sell so that I can go on this big road trip adventure that my husband and I planned for and that I promised him that I would go on anyway. And I, I don't know what God's plan is. So, so then I, I look at it and I go, okay, I've been very lonely and I find myself, oh, hello, turtle. That's a bad place to be in the road. I find myself thinking, um, should I be looking for another life partner. My husband said after a few months, don't mourn too long, after a few months, I want you to start dating so you won't be alone. Well, if I do that now, then there's a very good chance I won't go on that trip that he wanted me to go on because, I mean, what are the chances that I'm going to find somebody that can, can or will drop their whole life and get in a camper with me and travel for two years? Now, if someone came along like that, I would know that was a sign from Kurt and God, for real. But um, I assume that I will find that person while I'm out on the road, right? So, okay. So, my daughter and her kids have been sent home to me. Like, it all happened all in the same puddle of time with Kurt's death, like it was meant to be, right? So, is that God telling me to do something specific with them? Am I supposed to, is there something I'm supposed to be doing with them? Or are they just supposed to be with me for this time period for some reason? Like, is there a reason they're at my house right now? Am I supposed to be helping them find a new place? Or am I supposed to be giving up the trip and staying with them? I don't know. Like, I wish God could just send me a text message and say, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing right now. So, initially when my daughter was moving home, we're going to use her as the example because it's what's heaviest on my heart this morning. Um, initially when my daughter was sent home to me, or when she came home to me, she didn't really have anywhere else to go. Her boyfriend of three or four years just walked out on her and the two kids. And she was a stay-at-home mom. She didn't have any way to pay her bills. And we initially had made a plan to move her to Columbia with her stepbrother. And they were going to get her a job up there. And I went up with her and helped her find an apartment that we could afford. And when I say we, I mean I was going to pay for it until her tax money came in. And then she was going to pay me back. Like all this stuff. Like we had this big plan. And she seemed really anxious about it. And it was giving me such anxiety just thinking about her two hours away in Columbia not having anyone to help her really I mean Lane would have helped her but like he has his own family um, and he de he doesn't have monetarily a way to like his time and his money are tied up in his family 
So I'm thinking about this and I'm like, well, you know, and it gave me such anxiety. And finally I kept thinking it through, thinking it through, thinking it through. And I finally said, you know what? She just needs to come home and I need to help her here locally where I am because I'm in the place to help her right now. God has blessed me with the ability to take some time to, to mourn Kurt's death and I can double up on that time and use it to help my daughter, right? Um, I sometimes am okay with that decision and sometimes I'm not. So at the time that I made that decision, it brought me such wonderful peace. It brought me such peace because I kept, I was so agonized about sending her up to this other city and then I made this decision to not do that and there was just such peace in my heart afterwards that I felt like that Miss Linda said that's the Holy Spirit when you feel when you make a decision and you feel this overwhelming peace and so I go with that I'm gonna go see them this week um, so I you know I say that and then I'm like okay well so I moved her in and with the kids and initially I did feel a big sense of peace and actually it was enjoyable initially to have her here but she is at a place of depression and grief in her life. She's grieving her dad. She's grieving her relationship. She's grieving the life she thought she was going to have. Like she had a specific one in her mind and she has difficulty with change. So she's unwilling or unable to unwrap that old dream and start a new one. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. She's, she's anxious and I look at her and I think, is this the right thing? Is me helping her right now the right thing? Am I in the right mindset? She and I fight a lot. And I look at her anxiety of mine. I'm like, were these both of us are these just giant wobbling balls of anxiety? And she comes at me. And a lot of times Satan, instead of me thinking, okay, what well, my daughter is just going through so much right now. How can I help her? I come back at her. I'm like, you know, you're being ridiculous and this is why and this is what you should do and I start and she says mom you treat me like a teenager you're never gonna treat me like an adult and then I follow that with well you need to find a place to live and then it just gets big um and I see Satan in that I see Satan in that I am trying so hard to have a good relationship with my kid before I go on this long trip and he is tearing down our relationship and so um anxiety a lot of it and you know they talk about giving your anxiety to God I mean that that's a hard pull right so yes okay I'm supposed to not worry you know and some people even say it's a sin I don't you know there, there's some trains on that but you know not worrying um, I'm supposed to take rest in Jesus okay but all this stuff in my life keeps coming at me and it's hard sometimes even when I pray to him and I say and I say it all the time to him God there's nothing I can I can do please help her please help her she won't listen to me she doesn't follow you and I don't know how to help her please help her see you please help her find a godly man please help her find a place to live and I pray about my trip dear God please let this be the right thing please keep me safe please help me find the right people please help me go the right places and I pray about the things with the house. I'm like, please help me get this done. Please don't let anything go wrong. I pray and I pray and I pray. Please help me make wise decisions. Please put the right people in my life. But it doesn't stop the worry. It really doesn't. I continue to sit and mull over it. And I don't know how to make that stop a lot of the time. Um, you know, I, I pray. I go to the Bible. I read. I talk to people. I talk to people in my church, I talk to my therapist, I talk to my friends, although I have to say recently, most of the, the friend bus has dropped off. Um, that's been hard because it's kind of gone back to where it was before Kurt got sick and that means I don't really have any friends. It's just me. Um, Khaki is very busy with the clinic and I can coerce her into coffee from time to time. I had breakfast with Abby the other day. Abby's sweet, but she is not a close and deep friend. She is just a a newer friend. Um, I don't know that. I don't know. Um, she's we've we've always been friendly. Um, just since Kurt got cancer, we've been friendlier. But she's not someone I would call and talk to about all my problems. Um, Beth has been off on her own. I'm not sure what's going on with Beth. I check in with Beth, and she's like. I don't know if she's blowing me off because I'm overwhelming her with all my angst or if she's got stuff going on in her own life. Um, I don't know. Uh, Christy and Victor are steady. Um, they came by, but again, they're not people I would call 
my kids. I would love to be able to talk to my daughter about my anxiety. And I'd love for her to be able to talk to me about hers, but we can't do it. My stepson, I have to be cautious about um, how much I talk to him about some of this stuff because he oversteps. You know, he decides he needs to help. He's overhelpful sometimes, so I have to sometimes keep information from him. My stepdaughter, a uh, younger child, similar thing. She can only absorb so much of the information, and my youngest son is not useful for anything in any way. So, lots of anxiety, trying to give it to God. What do you do? What do you do when you're overwhelmed with anxiety and you can't, you've given it to God, but you can't seem to stop thinking about it? Like, what's your answer? What kind of distraction? You know, what do you do when it's like that for you? Because I'd love to hear it because I'm stuck and I'm scared. So, drop some comments below. Tell me what you do.